Hey folks, Mad Rabbit here, back in a little bit of a Dwarf Fortress update. In case you have not yet heard, there is a new version of Dwarf Fortress that has finally released. It's been about a year, yes, 42, version 42.01, currently up at bay12games.com, released yesterday, December 1st, 2015. All right, well, in, in most likelihood, this will probably be referred to as Dwarf Fortress 2016 um because most likely we won't have another major release for a while but they're gonna probably do, be doing a lot of bug fixes and stuff i just want to go over really quickly some of the new features and let people on my channel know that yeah i will be back with a let's play of this in fortress mode probably when um the starter pack gets updated at least for the phoebus uh tile set which i i like and probably dwarf therapist too i have to wait for <laughs> Because I really can't play the game without those two. Because uh, I just have grown so used to to that visual look and having Dwarf Therapist. So I will be doing a Let's Play with Fortress Mode very soon. Who knows how long that will take till that stuff gets updated. But um, hopefully not too long. And uh, I also want to do some Adventure Mode stuff. Because some new things have been added in Adventure Mode uh, also. So I'm hoping to play as an animal humanoid. Which you can do now. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, because I'm Mad Rabbit, I'm going to hopefully play like a rabbit humanoid. But we'll see what choices we get. I'm not really sure what, what the choices are yet, but we'll see. All right, let's just go over what the new stuff is from the previous version. I'm just going to read off the list off of uh, the Dwarf Fortress website here, kind of like the official patch note list. All right, so ability to designate taverns, temples, and libraries in the fortress. So this is a big one. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I... I I might try and like try and look at a couple tutorials and stuff before I actually do my let's play. Uh, hopefully, I won't stumble through that when I'm actually playing the let's play, but uh, we'll see. Uh, the taverns and limebodies also exist in adventure mode and world generation, so this will affect legends, I imagine. Uh, tavern keepers can serve drinks in both modes. Goblets can be used by the dwarfs to drink in taverns or otherwise. All right. So there's actually a, a reason for the mugs now, making mugs and goblets. That's cool. Uh, performances um, include stories, poetry, music, and dance. You can view activity descriptions from the unit job list. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. I mean, you can actually make bards and things like that in this now. <laughs> so they're, you're actually going to be able to take a look at what, like, their poetry. And I think it's going to be sort of like a randomly generated stories and poetry and books and all that kind of stuff. So... Sounds cool. Next one. Art forms are randomly generated for each civilization. Instruments are now all generated. Instruments can be used in both modes. Interesting. Most instru instruments are constructed from multiple pieces using different materials. Personalities and values lead to needs which can be met by various actions in both modes. Hmm. I'm not really sure what that means, but I think it's going to probably have an effect on when it says personalities and values, probably to do with the art and the values part, maybe with the, the religion stuff. So we'll see how that works out. All right. The fort has visitors now. Residency, petitions, and eventual citizenship include non-dwarfs. So you can get humans, elves. Well, not, why would we want elves, right, really? No, you wouldn't want elves. Uh, anything but elves can actually be invited to the fortress. I don't know. Maybe you could invite elves. I don't know. Probably goblins, too, because I, mean, I would keep running into goblin liaisons and stuff. So, good chance you might get goblins and these, some of these animal people in your fort now. So, that's pretty cool. All right. Tavern visitors include mercenaries, monster slayers, bandits, diplomats, and performers. Now, keep in mind the monster slayer one. There's going to be an announcement a little bit further down. Uh, really cool. Um, you can set details for clothing and armor jobs to make them for other races that can equip them. In other words, uh, the large armors that human-sized people use, you can actually make those now uh, to equip some of these citizens that are going to become, you know, these visitors that are going to become citizens. So if they wear the larger armor types, they'll actually be able to make armor for them if they join you. So you can actually equip them in your military. Monster Slayers, yeah, this is what I'm talking about here. Monster Slayers can petition your fortress to go down and fight monsters once you discover the underground. So that's cool. I mean, you can actually, act, actually they can just pop up and help you out, clear out your caverns for you, right? 
Uh, performance troops are active in world generation and into play. Visiting the fort can be formed in adventure mode. Interesting. Uh, new knowledge system divided into nine branches, though it has very few practical effects so far. I imagine this is going to affect the book stuff. Now, the next, well, the next announcement here. Fortress scholars can advance knowledge, form master and apprentice relationships, and write down their findings. Fortress scribes can copy works in your library. Scholars can visit your fortress libraries, bring knowledge from around the world. So you can get books from outside of your fortress to come in when scholars come to visit. Interesting. Devoted historical figures can visit your fortress temples. So that's interesting. Some of the people you might see in Legends mode that have a particular, you know, deity that they worship may come to your fortress and worship there as a visitor. Three forms of writing materials. Papyrus sheets, paper sheets, and parchment sheets. All right, now, papyrus sheets are made directly from the, the plant at the farmer's workshop. I don't really know what plant that is, but <laughs> we'll figure that out. I, I imagine it's just like a... And the farmer's worked up this probably just in order to do it. I haven't looked at this yet. Now, keep in mind. Uh, paper is made from pressed slurries. Starting, start at the, the Kern Mill, and then you go to a screw press. So paper's a little more involved. Uh, parchment is made from hide and milk of lime. Now, milk of lime. Hmm. At the tanners. Okay, bake quick lime at a kiln. Then make milk of lime at an ashery so there's a little bit more involved there too for that so keep that in mind all right sheets are used to make queries or with rollers to make scrolls i'm not sure i pronounced that word right but well, whatever okay sheets are made are used to make queries or with rollers to make scrolls these are then used for writing queries can be bound into codices with bindings after they contain writing. Dwarfs read books in the library. They don't need to be scholars. Values, I remember we mentioned that earlier, values can be passed in writing, both modes, and through adventure mode arguments. Uses some conversation skills, okay. Animal people are playable as adventurers. That's what I'm talking about right there. I wanna try some of that out in adventure mode. And they will arrive at, as fort visitors, and sometimes live in towns in playable populations. Okay, Children play with toys now. They can also play make-believe in both modes. Personality can be customized, randomized in adventure mode. Appearance can be randomized as well. Interesting. Uh, temples can be defiled in both modes. Dwarf temples can be assigned to particular gods. So I imagine if you defile the temple in your fortress, that particular dwarf that did that would be cursed either as a were creature or vampire. That's um, an assumption on my part, but we'll just see. Um, adventurer can rent rooms and inns. Adventurers can compose new poems, music, and dances. Adventurers can write material down on empty qu queries or scrolls. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing queries. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Alcohol causes inebriation, erratic behavior, unconsciousness, and death. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well, hopefully that's not too uh, problematic for dwarves, but we'll see. Festivals occur in world generation, though we haven't gotten them out of there yet. I'm not really sure what that means, but uh, dwarves will wear trinkets again. Okay, so they'll actually wear the things that you can make at your uh, craft station there. All right, there's a couple of major bug fixes and other bug fixes. I'll just go over them really quickly. Fix some army pathing issues, which I... I'm assuming from what I've read, this may mean we may actually start getting some sieges again because we really haven't seen a whole lot of sieges in point four zero, and I'm hoping to see that again. Uh, goblins have mounts again. That yeah, should be interesting. Fixed long-standing flow bug with unit occupancy. Stopped some issues with brawls escalating to non-lethal. Other bug fixes and tweaks. Looking at reactions. All right, you know what? I might not even read all these. Fixed inversion problem. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know what? I'm not going to read all them. Um, but if you want to, you can just go to the Dwarf Fortress website if you're really interested in uh, the actual bug fixes from the previous version. Now, he's going to be doing a lot of 
work here on bug fixes over the next. So it's going to be a lot of quick releases, probably within days and weeks, he says here, rather than months. And um, once we'll probably get to a point where, like we were in the previous release, where it just stops updating. So that may take, that may be a period of time there. So uh, just so you know. Um, so a lot of bugs are going to be squashed. Probably a few more small added features, I'd imagine. But uh, we'll see how that works out because he's probably going to add a few more things here and there. Let's see. Now the locations list will let you know what sort of furniture and items you need. L. Okay, so I'm just reading this in the uh, the notes here, and you can set cavern tavern keepers, scribes, and other occupations as well. You also need to set up drink stockpiles and a chest for goblets in taverns for drink services to work properly. But the rest can still drink without a tavern as before. So remember that too. There's a few little tidbits here that I've seen. Um, a designated tavern, temple, or library from a meeting area zone, bedroom, or dining room using the new assigned locations option. So I think that's what that that little option thing is for the L. But, uh, I haven't gotten into the game yet, so we'll see. Um, if anyone knows more about that aspect of it, describe exactly how you assign the locations and whatnot, let me know in the comments. And uh, anyway, yeah, so I guess that's it. I don't want to ramble on here too much. Uh, you can read the full patch notes if you want more information at uh, bay12games.com. Uh, dwarf Fortress slash dwarf, slash dwarves. All right, so... Yeah, coming soon. New Look Fortress Mode Let's Play here on this channel. Probably some adventure mode stuff after that. A little bit here and there. Test some things out. Because I really want to try out all these new things. That sounds really cool. So thanks for listening to this update, folks. And uh, hopefully I will see you soon. Within the next, who knows, a couple weeks. Maybe a month or two. Who knows how long this will take. But it won't be too long, hopefully. All right. Adios, folks.